Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my presentation on calculating the reacting masses of substances involved in chemical reactions. We're going to start with some easier examples, and then I'll do another video later on some harder examples. Um, now, before you watch this, make sure you're comfortable with interpreting chemical symbols and formulas, um, with calculating relative formula mass, and with the basics of the mole concept. I've got videos on all of those, so check those out first if you're not sure. So in this video, we'll do a quick recap of what we mean by moles, and then we'll just work through five or so different examples, um, gradually getting a bit more difficult. Now, um, to recap then, the mole concept, this is one of the central ideas in the whole of chemistry. So moles um, are the unit of measurement of chemical quantities. Okay. So if we've got the same number of moles of two different substances, we've got equal amounts of them. So the same number of moles of two different substances is the same amount and the reason why is because we have the same number of particles okay and particles is what matters in chemistry now um, to calculate quantities in moles what we do is we divide the mass of something in grams by its relative formula mass mr or we have this equation here n equals m over mr um, we can equally rearrange that, and we'll have to do that as well at some point in this um, uh, in the examples, we'll see, by saying that the mass of something in grams is the quantity in moles multiplied by the mR, and we'll look at that as well later. Okay, so let's look at example one, um, which is um, what mass of chlorine reacts with six grams of hydrogen, H2, um, to produce hydrogen chloride, HCl? Now, we're going to follow the same method on all the ones in this question. We'll calculate the moles of the thing that we know. We'll state the number of moles of the thing we're finding. And then we'll calculate the number of moles of the thing we're finding, which I've called the target. OK, so we are starting with six grams of hydrogen. So that is our that is our known substance. And it's asking about what mass of chlorine. So that is going to be our target. So let's start by finding the number of moles of hydrogen. So what we're going to do, we're going to say N in brackets H2. So it's really clear that that's the quantity of hydrogen in moles is M over MR. Okay. Um, and we know from uh, the question that we've got six grams of hydrogen. So we do six divided by MR, which is the relative formula mass of hydrogen, which in this case is two. So we've got six divided by two, and that gives us three moles of hydrogen now that is not our whole answer that is just this first step done we've calculated our known moles so now we've got to state the number of moles of our target now our target is the cl2 and we've got to look at the the equation here the hydrogen and chlorine in the equation are in a one-to-one -one ratio so if we had one mole of h2 we would also have one mole of cl2 now, we don't have one H2, we've actually got three. So because they're in a one-to-one -one ratio, that means we would also have three moles of chlorine. So I'm just going to state here that my number of moles of Cl2 equals my number of moles of H2, which is just going to be three. Okay, that's what we worked out a second ago. So I've stated my target moles, and now I'm going to calculate my target mass. So the mass of something, so the mass of chlorine, is going to be equal to the number of moles multiplied by its MR. So the number of moles of chlorine we saw just now was three. Multiply it by its MR, which given in the question is 71. And that gives me a final answer of 213 grams. Okay. So to recap, first of all, we found the number of moles of our known substance. Then we determined the number of moles of our target substance and then we found the mass of our target substance. Example two, what mass of carbon dioxide, CO2, is produced by the decomposition of 25 grams of calcium carbonate, CaCO3? So again, the carbon dioxide, this is gonna be our target, that's what we're finding. And the calcium carbonate, that's the one that we know because it tells us we've got 25 grams, so that is our known thing. So our first step is to going to be to calculate the moles of our known substance. So we're going to say the N, the number of moles of calcium carbonate, CaCO3, 
equals m over mr. Okay. Now our mass of calcium carbonate from the question is 25 grams. And our MR of calcium carbonate, again from the question, is 100. So we do 25 divided by 100, which comes to 0 0.25 moles. Okay, so that's that first step done. The next step is to state the target moles. And again, it's about understanding the equation. Our calcium carbonate and our carbon dioxide are in a one to one ratio. So it stands to reason that the number of moles of carbon dioxide equals our number of moles of calcium carbonate. Okay, our number of moles of calcium carbonate was 0.25, so therefore our number of moles of carbon dioxide is also 0.25 moles. Okay, so that's the third, second step done, and now our third step is to calculate the target mass. So all we do is we say the mass of carbon dioxide is going to be the quantity in moles n multiplied by its mr. So we've got 0.25, that was the quantity we just worked out, multiplied by the mr, which is given in the question, 44. 0.25 multiplied by 44 gives us 11 grams as our final answer. Okay, slightly harder example now because we're starting to get some, some slightly bigger numbers and some slightly more difficult things to look at. But let's, let's have another go still. So what mass of aluminium chloride, AlCl3, is needed to produce 6.39 grams of aluminium nitrate, AlNO3, in brackets, 3. So the aluminium nitrate, that is going to be our known substance because we're given the mass for it. And the aluminium chloride, because we're finding its mass, that is our target. So let's find the number of moles of our known substance. So number of moles of Al, NO3 in brackets 3. Always for moles, we're going to say mass over MR. Um, now the mass of aluminium nitrate in the question was 6.39. Okay. And we're dividing it by the relative formula mass of um, aluminium nitrate, which is 213. And if we do that, we get a value of 0 0.03 moles of aluminium nitrate. So we've calculated our known number of moles. Now we need to state our target number of moles. Now again, um, uh, our aluminium nitrate and our um, aluminium chloride, which is the target, are in a one to one ratio. So their numbers of moles will be equal. So we can just say this, we say the number of moles of aluminium chloride, AlCl3, equals our number of moles of aluminium nitrate, AlNO3, 3, like that, okay? And we've just found that it was 0 0.03 moles. So that is our second step done. So our last step then is just to calculate our mass of that many moles of aluminium chloride. So mass of AlCl3, and the mass of something is always the quantity in moles, N, multiplied by relative form mass, MR. So we have 0 0.03 multiplied by um, our relative formula mass for aluminium chloride, which is up here, 133.5. And if we do that, it gives us a value of 4.01 grams, and that is our final answer. So again, we followed the same process. We've calculated the moles of the thing that we were given in the question. We determine the number of moles of the target that we're trying to find, and then we find we, we find the mass of that by multiplying by MR. Okay, example number four. What mass of hydrogen is needed to produce 45 grams of water? So we're trying to find a mass of hydrogen, H2, and we're trying to make 45 grams of water, H2O. The complicating factor this time is that we're not given our relative formula masses, our MRs. So we will need to calculate those um, as we go. Um, now, we may as well do that at the start of the question just to, just to keep it nice and simple. So let's do um, a hydrogen first of all. So the MR of H2 is gonna equal two times H. We've got the atomic masses in the, um, in the question. So two times H, which is two times one, which comes to two. And our MR for water H2O is going to be equal 
2 times h plus 1 lot of o. That's the formula. So that's 2 times 1 plus 1 times 16, and that will come to 18. So we're going to use those values later in a second. Hopefully you can see here the value of um, presenting these calculations really clearly uh, in brackets like that. So now we can calculate the number of moles of our known substance. Our known substance is water. So water is the known because we've got the mass of it. And H2 is our target because we don't have a mass for it. So let's have a look. So the number of moles of um, uh, uh, H, uh, sorry, um, water is number of moles of water equals M over MR, um, which equals uh, 45 over the 18 that we just calculated for our MR. And that will give us a value of 2.5 moles okay so now we need to determine the number of moles of the target now our hydrogen and water are in a two to two ratio which is the same as a one to one ratio so it means that however many moles of uh, water we've got we've got the same number of moles of hydrogen so the number of moles of hydrogen is just equal to the number of moles of water which we can show like that so we can just say that it is 2.5 moles as well so now we can move on to calculating its mass. So the mass of H2 is the quantity of moles multiplied by its MR, the relative formula mass. So we just found it was 2.5 moles. So it's going to be 2.5 multiplied by the MR we calculated earlier, which was 2. And that gives us a final answer of 5 grams. Really well done if you followed that. So final example we'll look at. Uh, what mass of water, H2O, is produced by the reaction of 4 grams of magnesium oxide? Um, and we've got the equation down below. So um, we don't have a mass for water, so that is our target. We do have a mass for magnesium oxide, so that is our known. And again, we don't have the relative formula masses, the MRs. We've only got ARs the atomic masses. So let's find our MRs first. So the MR of water, we saw it on the slide before, but let's just practice it again, um, is 2 times hydrogen plus 1 times oxygen, which is 2 times 1 for hydrogen and 1 times 16 for oxygen, which comes to um, 18. And if we do the same for MgO, so the MR of MgO, again, look how I'm presenting it in brackets like that, um, is 1 times mg because there's 1 mg and 1 times o because there's 1 times there's 1 oxygen so 24 is the mass for mg so that's 1 times 24 and it to 1 times 16 for oxygen and that leaves us with 40 uh, as our mr for mgo note that we've got this relative formula mass there you'll off you know we don't need to use that um so don't think you have to use all the numbers in a question they'll put more information than you need just to see if you can select the right information so anyway what we're going to do now is calculate the number of moles of our known so the number of moles of mgo so we're going to go like this we'll say um number of moles of mgo equals m over mr which is um our four grams from the question divided by the 40 that we just found out and that gives us 0 0.1 moles of MgO. So now we look at the equation to figure out the number of moles of our target and the MgO and the H2O are in a one to one ratio. So we can just say like this, we can say the number of moles of um, MgO, not MgO, sorry, the number of moles of H2O equals the number of moles of MgO, which equals 0 0.1. So now we just need to calculate the target mass. So the mass of H2O is just going to be the number of moles multiplied by the relative formula mass. So 0 0.1, we just found that out, multiplied by 18 as our relative formula mass for water. And that will give us 1.8 grams as our final answer really well done if you got that far um, and as with uh, all these kind of um, calculation type presentations 
once you've looked at it, go back to the beginning side and try and do them yourself without listening to, to my feedback and see if, see if you can get the, uh, the right answer yourself. Okay, so the end. Uh, as always, well done if you got this far and thank you for listening.